Would you really want father government to have the last say about what happens in schools? How about the village that sends your elementary age child home with a comic book including graphic displays of sexual grooming? I'm here to speak on behalf of our children and I'm here to say that we need to reject the ideology of equity in our schools. No mask mandates. My child, my children will not come to school on Monday with a mask on. All right, that's not happening. And I will bring every single gun loaded and ready. Wow. Well, good evening, everyone. We begin the readout tonight with, with those angry moms that you hear so much about, yelling and screaming about vaccines and children's books that don't do enough to rub the founding father's bellies or that dare to mention black or gay people, and who, just like that last parent you heard, got so incensed over mask wearing to protect against COVID, some of them threatened intimidation and violence towards school officials. Which brings us to one of the greatest crises we face today, violence in our schools, as well as in our, our hospitals, grocery stores, places of worship, and just today at a cemetery during a funeral in Racine, Wisconsin. There is a lot of gun violence today in America, too much, more than in any rich country on earth, and far too little being done about it. Which, which had me thinking, where are those angry moms now? Why aren't they protesting or running for school board and organized gangs to protect the kids from getting shot in school massacres? Isn't, isn't this a bigger child protection issue than Toni Morrison books? I mean, it's almost like their protests were really just political theater and not about protecting the kids at all. Because what could be more important when it comes to protecting children than trying, at least trying, to stop these mass shootings? I mean, the kids are sick of it. They are marching and walking out of school. The teachers are sick of it. So bring on the angry moms, right? Where did they go? Well, tonight, in this hour, America's fed-up dad, President Joe Biden, will address the nation on rising gun violence in a televised address from the White House. The call for Congress to respond to make this time different saw the House Judiciary Committee holding a contentious debate over a package of new gun bills. The Protecting Our Kids Act raises the purchasing age for certain firearms and attempts to crack down on large-capacity magazines. The debate, however, exposed the deep partisan standoff over guns. With one Republican lawmaker who attended the hearing via video conference denouncing the proposed changes while brandishing various guns that he owns. Congressman Eric Swalwell then posed this question to Republican colleagues blocking reforms in the wake of most of the most recent school shootings. So my colleagues today who flew in town, came to work, got ready to argue. My question is, why did you come here for at all? Why did you come here at all? If you're not here for the children, why don't you go to the funeral of the killer? Joining me now is Congressman Eric Swalwell of California and David Hogg, co-founder of March for Our Lives and survivor of the 2018 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida. Thank you both for being here. I'd love to know what the answer was to your question, um, Congressman Swalwell. Uh, Joy and, and David, good evening. It was absolute uh, silence and, and, frankly, shame because they don't have an answer as to who they are showing up for. Uh, and my question was, if, if you're not there for the kids, if you don't want to raise the age to 21 on buying an assault weapon, if you don't want to have a safe storage act, and if you don't believe in going after ghost guns and you don't believe in banning high-capacity magazines, well, then you're coming down on the side of the killer because only the killers of our kids benefit from legislation uh, being blocked like that. And instead, they go after mental health. They say it's a family problem. They say this is really, you know, about schools being soft targets. But when we put legislation up to address mental health, when we try and feed families, teach families, give jobs to families, and when we try and fund schools, they vote against it, it feels like it's a carnival shell game and, and that they're really just there, you know, to make sure that we're a country of unrestricted weaponry. So if David Hogg can keep the faith in this fight and, and believe that we can see change, uh, then the least we can do uh, in Congress uh, is keep making that change. And, and that's why, you know, I stay in the fight. You know, I mean, we had today, David Hogg, a, a a gunman in Tulsa who had had back issues, had surgery, get angry because he was still in pain, go back to the hospital where he was treated, actually go buy, on the way back to the hospital, go buy an AR-15, because you can just buy it on impulse, go into the hospital, shoot the, uh, the doctor and three other people, and then kill himself. Like, he was able to buy the gun as he's thinking about doing the mass shooting. That's how easy it is to get 
that kind of a firearm. And we had a guy today, Billy Long of Missouri, blaming abortion, abortion for school shootings. So it's a, it's a, the problem is, is abortion. For you, do any of these arguments make do they matter? Because it could be all, right? If it's mental health, then don't give people with mental health issues a gun. If the schools are soft targets, hell yeah, they're soft targets. Anyone with a gun can go in there and shoot them up. Do, does any of it get us away from talking about gun reform? I think the reality is we need to have a change in our conversation here. Um, for too long, this conversation has been you're either anti-gun or pro-gun. Our country is one thing. We need to be pro-peace. Our kids need to be safe in their schools and communities. Those parents that were advocating, even though I strongly disagree with them and think many of them are completely wrong, they at least claim to care about their kids. You know, there were zero kids that died this year in mass readings in their schools. It's not the word gay that's getting kids killed. Um, it's it's people like the 19-year-old at the at my high school that were that waited until they were legally old enough to buy an AR-15, like the shooter in Buffalo, like the shooter in Texas as well to go out and buy an AR-15 and shoot up their school their school or their community or a different community. They are criminal masterminds that have deep networks to the, to the black market. Uh, they are barely adults. And what we need as Americans isn't to think of this as Democrats or Republicans, but as Americans and remember who we're fighting for. I met a young lady who's about seven years old named Eleanor the other day in front of Senator Toomey's office. Her favorite thing to do is code. Uh, her dad was a mailman and her mom uh, was, uh, I presume, a teacher. And we were protesting outside of Senator Toomey's office with her and teachers, uh, just simply asking for a meeting, not acknowledging we don't agree on everything, but that we need action. All Americans agree that we need action and we can't let these senators move on from this. And you know what Senator Toomey said to us when we, and it was the same thing that happened to John Cornyn just now in Texas with very similar young people that I was outside with, 10 year olds, girls that wanted to be Marines you know, a young child that wanted to be a, a, the president one day. They all said, I don't have time to meet with you. They don't have time to meet with people like Eleanor. That's who we're fighting for here. And that's what frustrates yeah. me so much. And it's heartbreaking because these are our kids, they're our future. Right. And, and it wouldn't have to do a, a, a whole lot. To, let, let me play this ad. I thought about this ad today and asked why I produced this to get it. This is just a little piece of a Sandy Hook promise ad that to me was the saddest thing ever and probably the most prescient ad ever. Take a look at this. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks, they can be a real lifesaver. <laughs> I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. And Congressman Swalwell, you know, to, to David's point, I presume whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or you have a house full of guns or you don't ever, ever touch a gun, you all feel ch shocked and saddened by the deaths of children and by children just being scared to go to school. This is something we all should share. And so I wonder, when you talk to Republicans about this issue, do they express that shock and sadness and a willingness to do anything, even just raise the age that w at which you can buy an AR-15? That's a simple thing that we could do. They absolutely do, Joy, but not the Republicans in Congress. And, and I've seen this issue now evolve over 10 years in Congress. Uh, I was just being sworn in right after Sandy Hook. I was single. I had no kids. I was naive and thought we would do something about this in Congress. We did nothing. We didn't have a hearing for seven years. Now, today, you know, after Uvalde, I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a seven-month-old. My five-year-old is starting to ask questions. So we're seeing a new generation of young kids wondering about their own safety. A Moms Demand Action volunteer in my community named Alex Navarro told me last week that her six-year-old daughter, after seeing the pictures of the 19 children in Texas, her six-year-old daughter said, Mom, what picture are you going to use for me? And that's where kids are today, is they're thinking that they're not even safe in their classroom. And to your question, what do Republicans think? Well, this organization called 97%, it's a nonpartisan organization. They just put out a poll of only gun owners. 86% of gun owners want background checks. 76% of gun owners want safe storage laws. And 67% want red flag laws. So the Republicans, they're not even out of touch with mainstream America. They're yeah, out of touch, out of touch with, gun with owners. the people in their own party who own guns. Yeah.
I'm going to give you the last word on this, David, because my kids are, are your age, <laughs> right? Are, are a little older than you. And they have been doing mass shooter drills since they were in the third grade in Florida, 15 minutes from Parkland. That's where we live, right near you. That's why you were so relatable to me, because you're like my kids. So to talk to the people who say, pass nothing, any kind of law, even the most minimal law, will hurt my gun rights. What do you say to them? We need action. Nothing is changing this. And if you agree with us, if, you know, if you're, I've gotten messages from Republicans and Democrats, gun owners and non-gun owners. This time is different. I'm telling you, this is the first time that I've protested demanding a meeting with a senator in Dallas, Texas, or protested period in Dallas, Texas. And I was not counter-protested by 40 men with AR-15s. There were zero, zero. That has never happened to me before in Texas. I got a message this morning that I woke up to on Twitter from somebody saying, I have an AR-15. I don't ever want this being used against kids, and I can't imagine. I don't. I can't even fathom it. How do I destroy this? Yeah. Gun owners are fed up. Republicans are fed up. People need to march with us on June 11th. And if you're interested in marching with us as Americans United for Peace, not as against guns or for guns, but for peace, march with us on June 11th in over 450 marches across the country, and join us for the not the end of a movement, but the beginning of one. Because this is going to take yeah. time to address. It's like cigarettes, but if you'd like to join us. You text March to 954-954. And once again, that is March to 954-954. I hope uh, that people will do that. And anyone who truly respects firearms understand that an 18-year-old does not have any business having an AR-15. I think every single gun owner that I know anyway agrees with that. Congressman Eric Swalwell, David Hawk, thank you both very much.